Billy the Goat was the main attraction at Playland Amusement Park. Screams and cheers went up when Billy, all sinew and coarse white hair, made his entry every evening around seven, pulling his golden white cart. The cart could take four kids, or two adults, plus Mickey, the boy who drove. Gee, yep, Mickey would say, slapping the reins on Billy's back. And off Billy would go, harness bells ringing, head down at first till he got the cart going, then head up and trotting, looking from side to side for mischief, or handouts of ice cream and caramel popcorn which he was ever ready to pause for. Sometimes Hank, the boss, would come over and give Billy a kick in the rump to tear him away from a popcorn or peanut bag. Billy would kick back, but his hooves hit the cart rather than Hank. One Sunday, Hank and another man approached the post at the start of the goat ride. The man had a little girl with him who was hopping up and down with excitement. Hank was talking and slapped Billy's shoulder. Billy was curious, but continued chewing the remains of a crunchy ice cream cone, while his grey blue eyes with their horizontal pupils gazed blandly at the little girl who was now stroking his forelock. Now, Hank was taking a lot of paper money from the man. Hank was tall, with a big stomach and a broad flat behind, which, once or twice, Billy had butted. At closing time, Billy was not led back to his stable. He was tugged towards a pickup whose back hatch was open. Go on, get in there, Billy, Hank shouted, giving Billy a kick to show he meant business. Billy clattered up the board they'd put as a ramp, and the hatch was banged shut. There was a long, bumpy ride, but Billy kept his balance easily. Finally, the car stopped in a driveway beside a big house, and Billy was untied and pulled to the ground. He let himself be led, mainly because he was curious, towards a lean-to shed. Here was a pan of water, and another pan of a vegetable and lettuce mishmash that tasted quite good. The next morning, the man drove off in his car, and then a woman and the little girl came out. Billy was taken for a sedate walk tied to a rope. He pranced and leapt, full of energy, but content to stay on the rope until he realised that the woman was taking him back to the lean-to. Billy dashed forward, head down, felt the rope leave the woman's hands, and then he galloped and rammed his horns, not too hard, against the trunk of a small tree. The little girl shrieked with pleasure. Billy tossed his head. He liked making his bells ring. The woman picked up his rope, and then, much to Billy's annoyance, she tied the end of it to a nearby stone statue. Now Billy was alone. He looked all around him, ate some grass, which was delicious, but already cut rather short. He tugged at his rope, but the rope held. He knew he could chew through it, but the task struck him as distasteful. So he made a good run from the statue and was jerked back and thrown to the ground. He was on his legs again at once, prancing higher than ever as he assessed the problem. Billy took another run and this time put his back into it, chin whiskers brushing the ground. Behind him he heard a crack. The statue fell. Billy galloped on, delayed hardly at all as his plunging legs hauled the statue behind him through hedges over stone paths. And then he found some flowers and paused to refresh himself. At this point he heard running feet and turned his head to see the woman of the house plus a boy coming towards him. The boy untied the rope from the remnant of statue and Billy was tugged firmly back towards the lean-to. The rope was then tied to a big iron spike. A day or so passed. Billy was well fed, but he would have preferred Playland Amusement Park with its noise and people. One afternoon, a large black dog came loping onto the lawn, saw Billy and started barking and nipping at him. Billy lowered his head and bounded forward, determined to pull up the iron stake, but the rope broke, which was even better. The dog ran round the corner of the greenhouse. Billy cut the corner close and there was a shattering of glass as one of his horns hit a pane. Blind with rage, Billy attacked the greenhouse for no reason except that it made a satisfying sound. Crash, bang, clatter, tinkle, and again crash. That evening, the man of the house loaded Billy onto the pickup and tied him so securely he could not lie down. Billy recognised from afar the cheerful cymbal clashes and the booms of the merry-go-round's music. They were back at Playland. Mickey ran up, smiling. Hey, Billy, back again! Hank wasn't smiling. But that very evening, Billy was harnessed to his cart again and made nearly a dozen rounds before closing time. Billy! There's Billy back! The yells from the crowd echoed in Billy's ears as he fell asleep in his old straw bed. Some people in the world liked him. 
But one busy evening, Billy was again unhitched from his cart by Mickey and dragged by Hank towards an automobile with a box at the back of it big enough for a horse. Billy braced his legs and had to be lifted onto the ramp by Hank and another man. His feet were tied together and Hank himself jerked Billy's legs from under him and Billy fell on his side. He kicked to no avail. He hated Hank at that moment. Hostility was like an explosion in him. Once more, Billy witnessed Hank receiving lots of paper money from the man who owned the horse box. This time it was a longer ride, far out into the country. There was the smell of horses. Some men untied Billy's feet and put him in a stable where there was straw and a bucket of water. Billy gave a mighty kick, rat-a-tat, against the side of his stable, just to show everyone and himself that there was plenty of fight in him yet. Then he blew his breath out and shook himself, jingling all his bells, and leapt from hind feet to front feet again and again. The men laughed and departed. The next day, Billy was tied to a wooden stake in the centre of a broad field of grass. A man mounted a horse and led Billy, trotting, around a circular area that was fenced in. When the horse trotted, Billy galloped. The man seemed pleased. This went on for a few days. They tried to get Billy to do something with a ribbon to which a piece of metal was attached. He didn't understand what they wanted and started eating the ribbon, whereupon they snatched it out of his mouth. The man kicked him in the haunch to make him pay attention and tried again. Billy wasn't trying very hard. A couple of days later, they all went off to a place with the biggest crowd Billy had ever seen, mostly sitting down in a great circle with a clear space in the middle. One of the men got on a horse and led Billy, amid a lot of other men and women on horses, twice round the arena in a big parade. There was music and cheers. Then Billy was led to the sidelines, and the man stood beside him on foot. They were in a kind of pen with no top. People leaned over the edge above them, and someone dropped what looked like a sizzling hot dog on Billy's back. The man brushed it off and was trying to stamp on it when it exploded with a terrible bang. Billy bolted forward. A roar of delight went up from the crowd. A man in a clown's costume spread his arms to deflect him. Billy aimed himself straight at the clown, who jumped nimbly into an ash can. Billy's horns hit the can with a clang and sent it rolling yards away with the clown in it. The people yelled with glee, and Billy's blood tingled. Bang! Someone had fired a gun. Billy hardly noticed. It was all part of the fun. An instant later, a rope hissed around his neck. Billy charged the rope thrower, but another man threw himself at Billy and caught him round the body. Billy twisted, fighting with his horns, and got the man in the arm, but the man held on. Someone else banged Billy on the head, stunning him. He was dimly aware of being carried off amid continuing cheers from the spectators. When they all got home to the ranch that night, the man took a whip to Billy. It was a long, strong whip, and it hurt. Billy butted the side of the stable in wrath, and on the rebound aimed himself at the man with the whip. The man jumped back and went away, but it was a long time before Billy calmed down. He hated everybody that night. In the morning, it was a longish ride back. They stopped, and Billy heard Hank's voice. He didn't seem pleased. He grabbed Billy's harness with one hand and steered him onto a grassier part of the park where cars and people never went. But Billy was too disturbed to eat. His back hurt worse, and his head throbbed. As dusk fell, Hank put the usual lights on and hitched Billy to his cart. This was strange, Billy thought. Hank never took a ride all by himself. Come along, Billy. Nice, Billy, Hank was saying in a soothing tone. But Billy sensed fear in him. Gee up, Billy. Easy does it, Hank said, and slapped the reins as Mickey always did. Billy started off. It felt good to put some of his anger into pulling the cart. Billy's trot became a gallop. Ho oh, there, Billy! Hank's command made Billy run all the faster. He hit a tree and knocked a wheel off the cart. Hank yelled for him to stop. Then Hank bounced out of the cart and Billy made a curve and stopped, looking back. Hank was sitting on the ground. And suddenly Billy charged. And charged again. Hank crawled away as best he could, but Billy whammed into Hank's broad, highly buttable backside. Hank fairly doubled backward and fell in a heap on the ground. Billy trotted in a circle, oblivious of the half a cart behind him. Hank lifted a blood-stained face. Billy lowered his head and attacked the mass, which was now about his own height. He gave an uppercut, pulled his horns out, backed a little, and then footed it daintily over Hank's body, cart wreck and all. 
dark blood ran into the much-trodden earth. The next thing Billy knew, he was yards away, trotting with his head up. The broken cart behind him seemed to weigh nothing at all. He trembled with leftover fury, snorted and shook himself. He made a swipe at the gate post by the car entrance and knocked the other wheel off the cart. Then he dashed down the road, took the first dirt road that he came to and kept on into the darkness, into the country. Finally, Billy trotted, then walked. Here were fields and a patch of woods. He lay down and slept. When he woke up, it was dawn and he was thirsty. He found a brook in a sloping place. Then he ate some of the rich grass there. One shaft of his cart remained attached to his harness, which was annoying, but more important was that he was free. He could go in any direction he chose, and from what he could see, there was grass and water everywhere. Adventure beckoned, so Billy took another dirt road and trotted on. Then Billy caught a scent and slowed down, lifted his nose and sniffed again curiously. Very soon he saw another goat in a field, a black and white goat. He walked on, came to an opening in the fence and entered the field. He saw that the other goat was tethered. She lifted her head, looked at him with mild surprise and went on chewing what she had in her mouth. Behind her was a long, low, white house, and near it clothes fluttered on a line. A woman came out of the house and threw a pan of something on the ground, saw Billy, and dropped the pan in astonishment. Then she approached Billy cautiously. Billy stood his ground, chewing some excellent clover which he'd just wrenched up. The woman made a shooing motion with her apron, but as if she didn't really mean it. Then she laughed. A nice laugh. Billy was an expert on laughs and he liked this woman's laugh at once because it was easy and happy. Tommy, the woman called to the house. Georgette, come out and see what's here. In a minute, two small children came out of the house and screamed with surprise, a little like the children at Playland. They offered Billy water. Billy was still chewing clover. He knew the thing to do was not to look aggressive, and in fact he felt not in the least like butting any of them. When the woman and the children called him towards the barn, he followed. Nobody tried to tie him up. Later, a man arrived and looked at Billy. When the sun went down, the woman untied the other goat and led her towards the barn, where Billy was walking about, looking things over. There were pigs, a water trough, and chickens and ducks behind a fence. Billy, said the man, and laughed when Billy recognised his name and looked at him. He gave Billy's harness a shake, as if he admired it, but he took it off and put it away somewhere. The barn was clean and had straw in it. The man put a leather collar on Billy, patted him and talked to him. The other goat, which they called Lucy, was tied up near Billy and the woman milked her into a small pail. Billy opened his mouth and said, Aah! It made everybody laugh. Billy jumped back and forth from front feet to hind feet. The memory of Hank, of the smell of his blood, was fast fading, like a bad spell of temper that had happened longer ago than yesterday, although he knew he'd given Hank more butts than he had ever given anyone or anything. In the morning, when the woman came into the barn, she looked surprised and really happy to see that Billy was still there. She said something friendly to him. Evidently, he wasn't going to be tied up ever, Billy thought as he trotted into the meadow with Lucy. Now that was fair play. <laughs>